In the summer of 2001, George Lucas was preparing to shoot the second Star Wars prequel. This is the first major feature film to be shot without film, entirely digitally. A new camera, developed with Sony and Panavision, allowed HD images to be captured out to videotape. This is the story of how Attack of the Clones revolutionized filmmaking. By the mid-90s, computer graphics were becoming commonplace in movies. Wanting to extend this technology into his new Star Wars prequels, Lucas embraced the idea of a digital cinematic future. Film, what you see on the first day is not at all what you're going to see in the tenth week. In the tenth week, it's going to be scratched and jittery and torn up. The quality is going to be disintegrated. Film can also take up to 24 hours to be processed and developed. Meaning until then, the only way to view your shot is through your camera's tiny monitor. For the kind of films that George makes, the kind of films that we make... And action! For us to shoot in film and then scan it into a computer is a ridiculous process. There is a lot of controversy about the fact that we're shooting this digitally. We wanted to shoot the last film this way. Good luck, everybody. Now let's kick ass. 77 take one. And uh, had been working with Sony for several years to try to make it happen, um, and just couldn't get the cameras built fast enough. There were certain inherent basic issues. Video is shot at 30 frames per second, film is shot at 24 frames per second, and that was a major pullback for us. We were able to later on get a prototype camera with a prototype lens and shoot a couple of scenes and bits of scenes digitally, which I wanted to do because I wanted to see how well it matched into the film that we'd shot. Uh, and it matched in so well nobody ever noticed it. By the time Attack of the Clones was ready to start shooting, Sony and Panavision delivered six prototype cameras capable of recording HD images at 24 frames per second. The depth of field, the clarity, the sharpness of the image, the brightness uh, was something that still just knocked us off our feet. With this, George can re replay the stuff instantly on a nice big screen and he can make a decision right there on whether he got the shot or not. I'm envious. <laughs> But it's great because everybody gets to see, you know, all the makeup people, all the, they can see whether there's something wrong, they can actually see it and go and fix it. So here's B roll 107, SR, and the safety recording. The quality of an image that's captured on a digital camera does not stand up against the same image that would be captured on a piece of motion picture film. A 35mm film frame typically contains a resolution of approximately 8K. Attack of the Clones was shot on HD cameras, which gives it a resolution of 1920 by 1080 pixels. To create the cinemascope aspect ratio, the image is cropped even further. Compared to the resolution of 35mm, Attack of the Clones might seem at an extreme disadvantage, but it's not as bad as you think. In order to prepare a movie for release, the film itself must go through several key stages. First, from the original negative, an interpositive is created. From the interpositive, more internegatives are made. And these internegatives are used to create the release prints that are sent out to the theaters. Every generational copy of the film reduces its resolution. THX, George Lucas's company that specializes in audio and video standards for movie theaters, had all the data. At the time, a typical film screened in a typical theater had a vertical resolution of only about 700 pixels, about the same as an HD image. Right now, we can shoot on high def, and 50 minutes after we shoot a 50 minute cassette, it's inside the computer. We can even cut the stuff on the set if we want to so I could see whether a take would work in or not. And then you can send it up to editorial and they can cut it and do things uh, literally in the same day. I felt at that point the quality was close enough to film that I wasn't going to end up with any less of an image. After paving the way with Attack of the Clones, and as technology continued to improve, more filmmakers opted to shoot their films digitally. This is where the fun begins. And the Oscar. 
goes to Anthony Dodd Mantle for Slumdog Millionaire. Of course, some filmmakers insist that nothing will ever replace the beauty of film. Technology is used to tell a story, and that's the whole point. The techniques they use are really a, a byproduct of that. It's really the, the, the filmmaker and the storyteller and how well they're able to tell the story that counts in the end.